What is going on everybody? It is Ozzy from Oz Talks Hardware and today I have a very simple question that I want you to think about for a hot minute. What was high-end gaming like five years ago? Now I really want you to think about this. In 2012, how much RAM did you need for gaming? What kind of CPU was okay for gaming? And what video card was necessary to play most AAA titles on very high to pretty much maxed out settings? Now if you're looking at PC gaming today, you really want at least eight gigabytes of memory even if you are on a tight budget. As a matter of fact, many enthusiasts often recommend at least 16 gigabytes of memory for the best experience. Quad-core processors or at least hyper-threaded dual cores have become the lowest standard and non-hyper-threaded dual cores are pretty much belittled to the office environment only. And two gigabytes of VRAM is the bare minimum for functional 1080p gaming. It's not uncommon for games to reach 50 plus gigabytes of installed hard disk space, so around 500 gigabytes is necessary with one terabyte being the norm. If you want a high mid-range to high-end computer in 2017, a sample build featuring a Ryzen R5 and GT GTX 1070 would at least be $750 today without an SSD. In 2012, dual core CPUs were fine for the most part, but games were starting to push the quad core agenda. Similarly, 4GB of DDR3 memory would be enough for a budget build, but 8GB of RAM was becoming the standard, especially considering how cheap a kit was at the time. If you wanted a high-end graphics card, you had the GTX 670 and 680 from Nvidia and the Radeon 7950 and 7970 from AMD. These top-end cards maxed out at 3 gigabytes of VRAM, and 1 gigabyte of VRAM was enough for 1080p gaming. I actually had a Radeon 5670 with only 512 megabytes of VRAM in one of my very first gaming PCs built back about five to six years ago. Now, this was perfectly fine for 1080p gaming on a budget, so honestly, you could have gotten away with half a gig of VRAM about five years ago. 500 gigabytes of space was plenty, but most higher-end PCs had about a terabyte. SSDs were not as commonplace as they are today, but it was not uncommon for higher-end machines to pick one up. Unfortunately, they were very expensive with a high-quality 32 gigabyte drive costing around $60. So with all of that being said, five years ago, how would a similarly performing gaming computer, relative to that era of course, cost? And how would it perform today? And how much would it cost today if you were to build one in 2017? Well, here with me, I have a gaming computer that uses components from around the 2012 era, minus the case, of course. The CPU is an i5-3550, an Ivy Bridge quad-core clocked at 3.3 gigahertz with six megabytes of smart cache. The MSRP for the CPU was between $205 and $215, but for simplicity's sake, let's say it was $200 flat. The motherboard I'm using is an ITX Z77 model I purchased about a year ago for a dorm ITX build I used before upgrading to Ryzen. Excluding the premium of ITX motherboards, the cheapest Z77 motherboard in Newegg's inventory on May 3rd, 2012, according to Wayback Machine, was a $99 Biostar model. Now, most people would not purchase a locked i5 with an overclocking capable motherboard. With that in mind, there are a few $50 H61 motherboards available that would have run just fine with the i5-3550. For the video's sake, we'll use that price instead. The 2012 PC uses 8GB of DDR3 memory clocked at 1600MHz which I would consider the norm at the time. If we search for the cheapest kit, we find two 4GB sticks for only $25. That puts the build at $275 for the CPU, motherboard, stock cooler, and RAM. The video card used was the 7950 of the 3GB Sapphire flavor. This video card was the second strongest single GPU consumer grade card released by AMD during its unveiling, second only to the 7970 and later to the 7970 GHz edition. It retailed for $449, but if we stick to our May 3rd date, the exact model was only $329 at the time. The storage I'm using is a 7200 RPM 1TB model hard drive. The cheapest model I found on Newegg was $55. The exact model of the power supply used in the build is the 600 watt OCZ Mod Extreme, an 80 plus certified modular power supply that could be bought for $80. I realize that there are cheaper options one could use and still have ample power supplied to the build, but for the sake of consistency, we will use the Mod Extreme model. The case used is more preferential than anything else, so we will basically copy and paste the price of the case used in our 27 sample build to our 2012 build. We will also assume that Windows was available for $27 from Kingwin as well. With all of that said and done, the total price of our 2012 build in 2012 was $774. So let's say you were looking to build a computer using components from 2012 for some odd reason, and the components that I'm using in this build caught your eye. 
How much would it cost you? Well, an i5-3550 goes for around $70 on eBay with H61 motherboards and 8GB of DDR3 memory totaling at $75. I picked up my 7950 from Reddit's hardware swap for $65 and used 1TB hard drives go for around $30 on eBay. Combined with a cheap $25 case and a solid $35 to $40 power supply, a 2012 machine would cost you somewhere around $300. Granted, I was able to pick up my i5 for only $50, and I'm sure you can alleviate a lot of the cost here by sacrificing certain parts of the computer, such as storage space, or maybe getting a cheaper CPU, such as going for a cheaper i5 model, or perhaps using an i3 instead of an i5. But if you're using my exact build, it's gonna cost you around $300. So now that we've covered the component and the price, how did a 2012 gaming computer perform five years ago and how does it perform today? Well, let's take a look. So the 2012 gaming computer, as you can see by the benchmarks, performed very, very well with titles from its era. And while titles from this era were a little bit harder on the machine, it still performed very well. And it could perform even better if you turn down some settings and tweak some settings as well. One interesting thing that I found though is that excluding a few games, the CPU usage on the i5 was a lot lower than I had initially imagined. For instance, Witcher 3, a game that benefits from more than four cores, only had CPU usage around 60% when paired with the 7950. Now, I attest this to the graphics card. If we had a GTX 1080 in the system, then I'm sure the CPU usage would be pinned to the 90s. This kind of affirms the idea that for any non-budget gaming system, you should spend a little bit more money for a more powerful CPU because that's going to last you a lot longer than the graphics card, a component you will upgrade every two years or so. Games such as GTA 5 and Smite depict the growing importance of more powerful CPU cores and more CPU cores in general. While IPC plays a significant role, we're starting to see that core count does too, especially in console ports and modern titles. So after all of this is said and done, what do you think gaming on a PC will be like in 2022? Do you think VR will have a more noticeable foot? And do you think actual reality will be kind of making its way into the community? How was PC gaming five years ago for those of you that remember it? And how has your personal gaming rig evolved? Definitely let me know in the comments below. I'll try to reply to as many as possible. But that's it for this video, guys. If you liked it, then definitely leave a like. And if you loved it, subscribe because I have more videos like this coming out soon. Thank you guys for all the wonderful love and support and I will see you guys next time.